And it's just amazing how uh, sort of industrious people are, I guess. So you just make the mould, we just made the mould out of bricks. I thought the cement would kind of flow out in between, but it's solid enough so it doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just exciting because they're going to last a long time. All it is, one bag of cement, a strong mixture with coarse sand. And then inside that cement there's some reinforcement and here they've used old bits of metal that were gathered from around this area. Ah, yeah. The handle. The handle. Yep. Oh, yes. It can... And they've left that little handle there because at the end of the lifespan of the elephant toilet you can lift this slab up and then put it onto the next side. Uh, some of them have got a really clear sort of two ears of the elephant there, footprints. Mm. And then, as I say, the squatting position means that most of the urine goes this way. Yeah. And up against the wall here, where the outlet is, is where we're smearing a bit of cement plaster so that guys who come into the toilet are not just doing the sort of automatic, just going straight into the hole. Uh, they're standing and urinating against the wall. So it's again just learning those little lessons. It doesn't matter if some urine gets into the pit, but if we can get most of it going out. Also, people use these toilets for washing with soap, and you want to avoid urine and soapy water getting into the pit, because the urea and the soap kill the bacteria which help in the decomposition process. So that's one main reason why you want to divert most of that liquid. Now, diverting it into a compost heap, which is underground, so that's a pit dug, and then you have layers of grass, then soil, then maize stalks. It enriches the compost, so the water also helps make it moist and it decomposes quicker, so it, it becomes, after a few months, really good, uh, rich compost for the garden. It's mud, and yes, it might crack and have problems and the, and, and the grass might leak, but then you know, why build something that's much better where the, than where people are living? And, and if you actually build something that they can maintain themselves with mud and with flats, that's the important thing. It's something that's improving the area without damaging the area, and I just think that's another Pompeii thing, just thinking of what's suitable for, for the environment. It's a bit like making a big cake, a big toilet cake. Transporting this mm. is quite a business, so the more we can do it like this, actually making them in the villages, the better. So again, working with the community so that they learn the skills of how to make that, because if it's not made well, the risk is that it could crack and somebody fall in, or it wouldn't be used again. You've really got to make the mixture right and reinforce it with some metal. This is all you need, really, in Africa to have good sanitation, something as simple as that with the training that goes alongside it to do with the housing and the health and hygiene education and I hope we're going to propagate this to really benefit a lot of people in Malawi especially. I think it's an incredible thing to see how easy these things are to build, these elephant toilets where they're separating off uh, the liquid waste from the solid waste, they're going to have a big sort of pit of solid waste that when they finish with the toilet they can just plant a tree in there, a fruit tree which that's going to obviously benefit the village. It's just another example of people being empowered and using the skills that they've got to, to make their environment better. So, uh, yeah, it's been good to see. Had to go in one earlier. Fine. <laughs> Wash my hands with the leaf. Fine. Happy. Happy. Happy.